tucked away in a Sweetwater Marsh National Wildlife Refuge beside the hustle and bustle of Chula Vista, lays a place where curiosity meets the natural world. The Living Coast Discovery Center. Welcoming an average of 80,000 people a year, this center has been an intricate part in bringing awareness to Southern California's most fascinating wildlife neighbors. And today, I am in for a rare treat as Marketing and Communications Manager, Rachel Harper, is showing me some of the incredible wildlife interactions guests can experience during Living Coast Discovery Center's behind the scenes and animal encounter tours. Our first star is an animal ambassador that I personally never knew was a backyard neighbor growing up. A silent predator of the night, known as the barn owl. Hi, my name is Rachel. I work here at the Living Coast Discovery Center in San Diego, California. And we are here with Taito, who is showing off right now. And if you're wondering why Taito is here with us, he is about nine years old. And when he was just a hatchling, he actually fell out of the nest. He became imprinted after he was rehabilitated at such a young age. So he needs humans to survive but that's why he's here with us at the ripe old age of nine. So barn owls are one of the most common owls in the world and they're actually excellent predators. So they are raptors, which by definition is a bird of prey, meaning that he will go after live prey. And he is looking around right now um, because he sees a lot of different things out here on the wildlife refuge. So he has excellent eyesight. You can notice that his eyes are actually pretty large for the size of his head, and that's a common trait in all raptors. Also, you might notice that his head, if I can get him to look at you and not rotate, <laughs> is actually heart-shaped. It's kind of got like a funnel shape to it, and that's going to allow them to hear better, which is very important for hunting. So their ears are actually on either side of their head, but one of their ears is located above the other, and that allows for very precise location of prey. So even if they can't see a mouse or a rodent or even a bug um, that they are trying to catch, they can hear it very well and they'll still be able to catch it. So Taito is a barn owl, and we actually have a couple of different other owls here. We have a great horned owl, which makes the typical hoot hoot sound. Um, Taito here as a barn owl, he'll actually make a screeching sound. Um, we also have a screech owl, and then the last type of owl that we have is a burrowing owl. And those guys are found uh, locally here in San Diego and even locally here on the refuge that we're located at. And burrowing owls are diurnal, which is uh, very different than other owl species. And unfortunately, their population is endangered here. So we're very proud that we actually have a pair of burrowing owls that are specifically meant to be breeding here. Um, that's in collaboration with a partnership with San Diego Zoo Global. And so we hope that our new pair of burrowing owls will be able to have a, a good breeding season and support their local population. Now, many of you may recognize this precious pint-sized raptor from the highlight video I did on San Diego Zoo Global's Wild Watch Burrowing Owl Project. And if you love looking at pictures of super cute fluff balls, I'm going to attach the link to this project below. Trust me, check it out after this video. You're gonna love it. While Rachel returned our first animal ambassador, I had a little time to explore another secret nook at the Discovery Center, a space that brings light to the all too often overlooked backyard neighbor with a very important job, the earthworm. My name is Catherine. I'm the Facilities and Sustainability Manager here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. What do you love so much about your job? My favorite thing about this job is, I think I would say interacting with um, kids and adults and just sharing some cool knowledge. And it's nice to see when like the light bulb clicks in their head and they're like, oh really, I could do this with my food waste? Or oh, I didn't know that about sharks and stuff like that. So. Oh, fantastic. So you have like isopods. Yes. Bunch of all the different types of decomposers. Um, but yeah, we, for vermicomposting, we use California red wigglers. Uh -huh. um, they're specialized for composting because they have a voracious appetite, so they'll eat through a lot of food waste matter. And what's really cool about them is they can ingest their castings, which is all this brown stuff you see here. It's another fancy word for poop. But they can ingest their poop about three times before it becomes toxic to them. So. If you have a worm bin at home, you go on a long vacation, or you forget to feed them for a while, they'll survive 
With a quick trip through a wetland wonderland, we made it to our next animal superstar, which just happens to be U.S.'s only marsupial. My name is Ayana, I'm one of the animal trainers here at the Living Coast, and with me I have Olive the opossum. She is actually one of our newest animal ambassadors and we are just debuting her animal encounter experience. So you're able to come behind the scenes, meet our dear Olive, feed her a few of her favorite snacks, and touch and say hello. Now as she first wakes up, we're gonna be able to see some of the adaptations that make these animals special and unique. We're also gonna get her started with some of her breakfast this morning as well. Now as we take a look at her, she might look familiar. This is one of the animals we'll see cruising around at nighttime typically. And opossums are very special in our ecosystems and habitats because they are going for different types of uh, foods that are left over from other animals. So they're kind of like the little garbage men of the ecosystems we have here. And they're very important for us to have around because they are going to clear out a lot of the extras that might be left behind. Now, as we take a look at her body, we're gonna see some of the things that make opossums very unique and some of the adaptations that are gonna help them cruise through their environment, including those claws. So they are going to be somewhat of an arboreal species, climbing through the trees, or if they're closer to home, we might see them climbing across fence posts. And those claws really help them get to those higher spaces. And while they're young, if we take a look at her tail, we're actually going to see a semi-prehensile tail, which means she can wrap it around things just a little bit. And when they're quite small, they're actually going to use those tails to help support them too. So she's able to balance and hold herself up when she is young. But once they are adults, they'll mainly rely on their claws to help them climb. So as a nocturnal species, of course, it can get quite dark at nighttime. And she's going to rely on the moon to help her see, but those whiskers help her paint a different picture as well. She's able to touch different things and sense her environment, getting a better idea of who is around her and what is around her too. Now Olive came to us from a local rescue after being or showing injuries consistent with a car strike. So if we do take a look at Olive's eyes, we will see some uh, of that evidence of that injury as well. And that's part of why Olive is here with us. And that's one of the main ways we are able to help opossums in their habitats and environments too. Being cautious of them moving through our spaces and the spaces we share with them will allow us to keep these animals around. And that's a really important animal for us to have around too because they are clearing out things like ticks, and other insects that can be cause or that can cause Lyme disease. Next, we head to our last animal encounter that I am told was going to leave my friends green with envy. Not really sure what that meant, but I knew I couldn't pass the shark and ray experience without taking a few seconds to see some of my local favorites. All right, let's feed some sea turtles. <laughs> okay, come on in. Wow. Hi, boys. So this is one of the animal interactions? Yes, yep, so you can book this. It's just a private animal encounter. You get to go behind the scenes, you get a private tour, and you get to feed these guys. Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh
tour is officially over. I'm waiting for the bus. I have to say this is probably SoCal's greatest kept secret. Unfortunately, it should not be a secret because it's an amazing place that everyone should try to visit if they can. It's a great opportunity to be introduced to species in your own backyard. Not to mention, if you are walkers, you don't even have to pay to come to this part. But they have walking trails. Amazing trails that go through the entire reserve. So, until next time, this is Miss Mallory inviting you to step outside and adventure.